When Robert Louis Stevenson was a boy, growing up in Edinburgh, Scotland in the late 1800s, everyone expected him to be a lighthouse builder, just like the Stevensons before him had been for three generations past. Robert's father, grandfather, great-grandfather, and uncles had built seemingly impossible structures out of concrete and granite that withstood pounding waves decade after decade and saved hundreds of thousands of lives. And not just lighthouses, they also built railways, bridges, canals, roads, harbors, and more. These men were geniuses at architecture and engineering, and it fell within reason that this youngest of the Stevensons would follow in their footsteps. But Robert struggled with illness for much of his young life, a tendency to coughs and fevers that kept him in bed and under the watchful eye of his nurse. So maybe it's natural that his interest fell more to books and writing than to the logistics of building lighthouses on the rocky, stormy coast of Scotland. Robert's parents were proud of this interest in the world of words. His father had also written stories in his spare time until his own father had found them and told him to give up such nonsense and mind your business. And to be fair, Robert did give the family business the old college try. Heading off to the University of Edinburgh in 1867 to study engineering. And he enjoyed his studies too. He worked hard to learn the family profession. And he actually did work on one lighthouse but it was hard for him to keep his mind on the mathematics. Often when he was supposed to be working on technical drawings of mirrors and railing sockets, he was instead jotting down story ideas in the margins. Each year during his holidays, Robert would travel with his father throughout Scotland and its islands to inspect the family's lighthouse works. But he really enjoyed these journeys more for the story material they gave him than for any engineering interest. And in 1871, Robert told his father he was shifting his course of study. And from here on out, he would be a man of letters, which included passing his bar exam to become a lawyer, but for the most part, his life was all about books, writing, and travel, mixing it up with well-known artists and authors throughout France and England and really around the world. One of his journeys was a canoe voyage in Belgium and France where he met Franny Osborne, who would later become his wife. Another journey, this time with an obstinate donkey named Modestine, took him through the rocky hills of central France and became the book Travels with a Donkey, it's one of the earliest accounts to present hiking and camping outdoors as something to do for fun and leisure. It also describes the use of one of the first sleeping bags, an affair large and heavy enough to require a donkey to carry it. In fact, his life pretty much consisted of episodes of travel and adventure that would inevitably break his poor health down to nothing, so that he would be forced to recuperate someplace where he would spend his time writing and thinking until he was well enough to move on to the next adventure. He left behind a string of inns and locations that would become landmarks in his honor. It was during a three-year stay in Westbourne, England, while mostly bedridden, that Stevenson wrote the bulk of his most popular work, Treasure Island, Kidnapped, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and the poetry collections A Child's Garden of Verses and Underwoods. Eventually, Still battling ill health while also seeking adventure, 37-year-old Lewis and his now wife, Fanny, traveled throughout the Pacific Islands, making friends with the Hawaiian king, Kalakaua, writing ballads and absorbing local folklore all along the way. In 1890, he and Fanny settled in Samoa, where, alarmed at increasing European and American influence in the South Sea Islands, his writing turned away from romance and adventure fiction toward a darker realism. Finally, all the health struggles caught up with him, and Robert Louis Stevenson died of a stroke in his island home in 1894 at age 44. The Samoans, who loved him, insisted on surrounding his body with a watch guard during the night, and the next day bore him on their shoulders to nearby Mount Via, where they buried him on a spot overlooking the sea. A verse from Stevenson's poem, Requiem, is inscribed on his tomb. Under the wide and starry sky, Dig the grave and let me lie. Glad did I live and gladly die, and I laid me down with a will. This be the verse you grave for me. Here he lies where he longed to be. Home is a sailor, home from the sea, and the hunter, home from the hill. Robert Louis Stevenson may not have built grand, life-saving structures of stone and light, but he did build lighthouses of words and ideas that have been illuminating life's stormy seas with beauty and knowledge ever since and are still standing, 
just as beautiful and tall as any of the beacons built by his forebearers. Thank you, Robert Louis Stevenson, for filling our bookshelves with poetry, adventure, and the brilliance of so many wonderfully written stories.